Enzyme immobilization. This features quite a lot on the exam papers. So this is a little bit of rapid revision and it's all part of leaving cert biology. So you're coming up to your exams and I bet you've encountered enzyme immobilization on your exam papers. So the best thing to do is to make it really easy for yourself. Just write the story, a few points on immobilization. First of all, what is enzyme immobilization? It's trapping or fixing enzymes to each other or to some other inert support. Inert means unreactive. So basically you're fixing it so that the enzymes can't go anywhere. So really you're trapping the enzymes so they can't go anywhere. You want to fix them in position. So how would you immobilize? Give some methods of immobilization. One method is to trap the enzymes in a gel. So you did this in the lab, so it's easy to remember. Or you can bond them chemically to a support such as glass, or you can bond them to each other. There are lots of different ways to immobilize enzymes. Know some examples, but the one where you immobilize the enzyme in gel is really important. Remember doing that practical, you had yeast which contains sucrase, that enzyme, and you trapped it in a gel. So here we are mixing our gel and it took us ages to get the lumps out of it. The gel is sodium alginate. And when you dropped the yeast and sodium alginate mixture into the calcium chloride solution, beads formed and you left them there to harden. So there's your syringe and in the syringe is the gel and the yeast. Eventually, after a few minutes, you got these beautiful beads and these beads are actually made of calcium alginate and inside is the yeast that contains the enzyme sucrase. So why bother? What are the benefits of immobilizing enzymes? Well, the first one is that when the enzymes are immobilized, you get a purer product. So there's no enzymes mixed in with your product. The second is enzymes can be reused. It's very expensive to isolate enzymes. Thirdly, the enzymes are stabilized. They're more tolerant to pH and temperature fluctuations. So how are these immobilized enzymes used? Well, there are hundreds of different types of enzymes and they're mostly used in bioprocessing to produce useful products, such as lactose-free milk. Different types of medicines are produced in bioprocessing by immobilized enzymes and also the production of fructose, that monosaccharide that's very sweet. In industry, bioprocessing takes place in this vessel known as a bioreactor. Into this vessel, the enzyme, the immobilized enzyme and the particular substrate are added and conditions are maintained to ensure that the pH and the temperature are optimal for that enzyme. For your exams, give specific details and start with the one that you know from the practical where you mobilized yeast. So the enzyme was sucrase, the substrate was sucrose, it was getting changed into glucose and fructose. Because remember, sucrose is a disaccharide. And when we're talking about the products in that practical, we really only talk about glucose because we test for it with a clinny stick, but know also that fructose would be formed too. So I really recommend you revise that that practical, it might be on your paper. So what about the production of lactose free milk? Well, lactose as well is a disaccharide and many people cannot tolerate it. So the enzyme lactase is added to the milk and it's going to act on the lactose in the milk and break it down into glucose and galactose. So you end up with lactose free milk. So remember, lactose is a disaccharide and it gets split into two monosaccharides, glucose and galactose. So as we go through those examples, you see how important biomolecules is that chapter. So go back and revise it. At this stage in your revision, focus on enzymes, absolutely everything to do with them. The graphs, the practicals, the theories, everything. Do the exam papers and use your textbook. The very best of luck.